Hello everybody and welcome to my item and equipment tier list for the Survivors of the Void DLC. First off, if you're looking for a complete tier list with all items, you can check out my 1.0 tier list after watching this video as I will not be covering the vanilla items here, just the ones added with the DLC. Also, if you'd like an even easier way to see the ranks of all items, there's a link to my online spreadsheet in the description below. If you're ever confused as to what an item's current rank is, that spreadsheet will always be up to date. As always, the ranks I give here are indicative of an item's general usefulness, their consistency, and not their overall power. Don't take what I say here as the golden rule of what is good versus bad in Risk of Rain 2, as the impact of a given item can and will change on a regular basis given the context of each individual run. Finally, some items perform substantially better on certain survivors in very specific circumstances, and in those cases I'll be sure to directly mention that, otherwise all items only have one rank associated with them. Alright, there are timestamps in the description and if you have over the video, so without further ado, let's begin. Starting here in common tier, Delicate Watch gets an S. 20% damage per stack, which is multiplicative with all other damage modifiers that you have? Yup, easy S tier item right here for you. Even with its major downside of being rendered completely useless upon reaching 25% HP or lower, the power that even just one or two watches provides is well, well worth the chance of losing it. Plus, the addition of another new common that we'll cover soon makes maintaining your watches even easier than simply avoiding damage. Next, Mocha gets an A. Turns out that half of a syringe plus half of a gold hoof makes for quite the potent singular item. All survivors benefit from the move speed and most can utilize the attack speed as well. Worst case scenario, you just get sped up animations on loader, artificer, and accurate instead of making the full use out of the speed. Next, oddly shaped opal gets an A. By picking up just one stack of this item, you've given yourself a whopping 50% damage reduction for the next hit so long as you haven't not taken damage in the past seven seconds. Essentially, opal helps tremendously for large singular instances of damage like from golems, but do almost nothing for tickle damage such as from lesser wisps. Opals also scale extremely well with only a few stacks. Five opals is 83% damage reduction for reference, making it an easy pickup from most multi shops that you see. Next, Power Elixir gets a B. Not gonna lie, the reason this thing exists is to save your watches from breaking, that's about it. Insert Rick and Morty joke here. Other than being perpetually enslaved to the watches, the only other thing elixirs are good for are those oh crap moments and run, which the goal is to prevent those moments from ever happening in the first place, which elixirs don't do at all. The final common, Roll of Pennies, gets a C. Yes, you can grab a Hellfire Tincture or just, you know, straight up go AFK in a group of enemies to get some ultra value out of any pennies that you have, but for most runs, those situations are few and far between. Conditional items are by definition inconsistent, and conditional items whose condition relies on you taking damage are especially so in a game like Risk of Rain 2. Next, for uncommons, the Hunter's Harpoon gets a B. Speaking of conditional items, here's an example of the second best condition, simply killing something. You will soon find out what the absolute best condition is. The reason I'm giving Harpoon a B is that the speed bonus it provides fades extremely quickly, often to the point where if you're not totally dialed into your run, you can easily waste the majority, if not all of it. This item shines particularly well on someone like the Railgunner, who only needs that fraction of a second to line up a shot on an enemy and is otherwise always on the move. Next, Ignition Tank gets a C. Unfortunately, there just aren't many sources of Ignite in the game to warrant any higher of a rank. As cool and actually as numerically good as the item is, again, the ranks I give here are based off consistency. There just aren't enough times where you're benefiting from Ignition Tanks. It's worth noting that the Artificer's Fire abilities are affected by tanks, making them a great pickup for the early game, but once you get further into a run, that extra burn damage that you get is only a fraction of your overall damage. Next, Regenerating Scrap gets an A. A free print at any green printer that you see per item per stage? Uh, I'll be taking some of those, yes, thank you very much. The difference having only a couple stacks of regen scrap does to your flexibility on each stage is hard to understate, especially inside of the blue portal. Free red items, anyone? It doesn't matter which green printer that you see, just toss however many scrap you have into it and you have a good time. Next, Shifting Request Form gets an S. This thing is nuts. You get the choice between two items for free on every single stage and those items increase in rarity for each stack of form that you have. It's essentially the old rusty key, but even better as it synergizes very, very well with one of the new equipments that we'll talk about towards the end. The final uncommon shuriken also gets an S. Here's that best condition that I was talking about earlier, simply attacking something. Instead of covering which survivors work exceptionally well with the shurikens, I'll instead talk about the railgunner who is the only survivor that you may want to consider not taking them on. The reason, as I covered in my railgunner guide, is that if you're close enough to the target, the shuriken will probably hit before your actual shot does and then steal any ice or fire bands that you were saving for that big boy damage. Otherwise, shurikens are absolutely fantastic additions to any run's arsenal. They scale in both damage 
and frequency per stack as the 10 second recovery period never changes regardless of how many stacks that you have. Having 10 shurikens total means that you'll be firing one off every second and for those lower stack counts you're still getting an extra 400% damage with the chance of proc chaining into something much bigger. Moving on to the legendaries, starting with Ben's raincoat, which gets an S. Preventing debuffs is powerful enough set. 100 HP is just the icing on the cake when you're never bled, burned, malachited, slowed, and or rooted again. The only thing that the Ben's raincoat does not prevent are freezes, which uh, honestly, I can't tell you why that's the case. And no, it does not affect things like receiving spinal tonic afflictions or bypassing your double band cooldowns. It's not that busted. Next, Bottled Chaos gets a B. Getting a random non-lunar equipment on top of your existing one has limited usefulness. Who would have thought? It's a fun item and can get quite crazy with that new equipment that I mentioned earlier, but for the most part, it provides more of an oh, okay, effect rather than a holy moly, did you see that? One. Next, Laser Scope gets an A. For the first stack, it causes your crits to deal three times damage instead of two times. It's not doubling your total crits as your base crit damage value begins at 100, so you're adding to that already existing 100. Crits are a common mechanic that you'll see in practically every run, but you're unlikely to get more than one scope, let alone cap your crit in most runs, therefore that extra increase it provides doesn't totally change the flow of your run. Next, Pocket ICBM gets an S. Man, we uh, sure got some powerful red items from this DLC, huh? Eh? While it specifically states that it affects your missile in reality, it's pretty lenient with its definition. For example, fireworks are affected. Also, when it says two additional missiles, what it actually means is two additional sources of missiles. This means things like your fireworks or disposable missile launcher equipment will not fire an extra two measly old missiles, but two additional streams of missiles. Next, spare drone parts gets a C. Your drones exist to draw aggro off of you, not deal damage. This item doesn't change that. Sure, it makes the drones damage much, much higher than usual, but when compared to to your damage, it really is no competition. Plus, if Colonel Drone Man dies, he won't respond until the next stage, making the overall usefulness of spare drone parts pretty limited. For the final red, Symbiotic Scorpion gets a big, fat, juicy S. Reducing two armor per hit with no expiration is very, 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 very strong. Even on survivors that rely more on burst damage than constantly attacking things, the Scorpion is still useful as your other items will make good use of it. Not to mention, most enemies that have armor only have 10 or 20, requiring only a few Scorpion stacks to punch through that initial layer of defense. And on top of it all, armor does go into the negatives and has no cap to how far down it can go as far as I know. Uh, but whatever you're hitting is going to just die before that matters anyway. Crazy strong item. Moving on now to the lonely new boss item, Defense Nucleus, which gets a C. You have to kill something to get the effect, and that something has to be an elite monster, and what you get is a marginally better polyp. Yeah, I think I'm good on that one. Thanks though, game. Moving on now to Lunars, starting with the Egocentrism, which gets an S. This thing is pretty crazy. It periodically can consumes a single item from your inventory, regardless of type, except for non-tiered stuff like consumed Dios or Tonic Afflictions, and then converts that item into another stack of egocentrism. And for every stack of ego that you have, hey, bro, check your ego, by the way. What you can do? Come on, it's parts like that, huh? What you can say? Step up, step up. I just had to do it. I'm sorry. Anyway, for every stack of ego that you have, it converts more egos even faster and faster and faster until you reach the point where every item that you pick up is ultimately another ego. Also, cleansing pool. Next, Eulogy Zero gets a C. You have to really like lunar items to use this thing. Sure, it cuts down on the amount of blue donuts that you have to spend on a given run, but hey, yeah, you, come here. Check this bad boy out for me, will ya? Take a look at that. It's worth noting that the lunars that you get at a multi shop or printer will transform before you actually use the interactable, so there won't be any guessing games as to when you'll be getting a lunar aside from opening chests. Next, Light Flux Pauldron gets a C. Now, you may be thinking, hold up, 50% cooldown reduction is absolutely insane on survivors that don't need to attack quickly. What in the heck is this guy thinking? Don't worry, that's also what I thought when I first picked up the item, but then quickly remembered that your ability's animation speeds are directly affected by your attack speed. Also, these increases and reductions are multiplicative, meaning that you are having your total attack speed per stack. So unless you really, really enjoy being a snail or have quite a bit of attack speed already, light pauldrons probably aren't the best item to grab. And for the last lunar stone flux pauldrons, this bad boy gets a D. Stone pauldrons are light pauldrons, but with even less of an upside. Gaining extra HP for extra movement speed is counterproductive, as the more movement speed that you have, the less you'll be losing HP in the first place as you're harder to hit. Now, yes, once your run is already up and going, 
going, losing half of your speed, but doubling your health is a pretty good trade as you'll often have too much speed. But at that point, is this item really going to make that much of a difference in your overall run? And at all other times, stone pauldrons are really only good for some meme tank builds. Moving on to the main event of this tier list for most of you, the void items. First up is the Ben Thick Bloom, which gets a C. What an item to start with, honestly. Remember how egocentrism converted one singular item each time? Well, the Ben Thick bloom converts the entire stack of the item and it does it three times per stage oh and it does three more stacks per bloom that you have yeah this item is pretty much the i want all red items this run and i don't care that i'll probably die from lack of mobility item i have been getting tons of questions on my streams regarding when to pick one of these things up hey look at that twitch.tv says willy gaming that's funny and honestly i can't really give you a good answer just pick it up whenever you want and don't say i didn't warn you about turning into a turtle mid run and one final thing when the benthic upgrades an item it chooses an item of the same type to upgrade into so damn Damage items will always go into another damage item, healing into healing, etc. Some items have multiple tags, such as the Harvester Scythe being both damage and healing, but you can make much better use of the bloom if, for example, you find a damage printer and then go all in with your white items, as if the bloom chooses that common item on the next stage, you just got a lot of damage greens. Next, the Encrusted Key gets an A. This is the only void item that you can essentially change your mind on picking up, as once you lose all of its stacks, any future rusted keys that you acquire will stay in their non-corrupted version. However, you will rarely want to change your mind as getting a free void item on every stage and the choice of three of them at that is extremely powerful. As you'll soon find out, most void items are pretty much direct upgrades over their counterparts, so the more you get, the better off you are. Next, Lost Year's Lenses get an S. These let you deal infinite damage to anything that's not a boss, and by boss, I mean anything that's not your teleporter fight or the final boss of the game. Everything else is fair game for the Lost Seers, and again, we're talking about infinite damage here, literally. Even on those survivors with slow attack rates, these things will absolutely annihilate anything and everything in your way. If you see void crit, you should probably take void crit. Uh, unless your goal is to go right to Mithrix or the Voidling on stage six, in which case keeping your chance to deal double damage to them is obviously the correct option. Next, Lysate Sail gets an A. Most survivor's special abilities are their most powerful ability, so getting more uses of it is a pretty good effect. However, your equipment is also an important slot. However, however, and for the third time now, there was an equipment added in this patch that kind of changes things just a bit. Also, there are kind of uh, two equipment here, not just one. Next, Needle Tick gets an A. In most situations, having a backloaded burst damage bleed is better than having one that ticks over time. Time, which is exactly what the collapse of the needle tick provides. Once the first collapse debuff is applied, the enemy then explodes three seconds later for 400% damage per stack of the debuff. Unlike bleeds and burns now, by the way, stacking more collapse does not refresh the duration of previous stacks. Functionally, needle ticks are very similar to regular bleeds where you just hit things for a bit and wait for the big number to get high enough. In my mind, needle tick is better for killing things with low HP, while normal bleed is better for tankier foes due to its continual stacking. However, I'm giving this item an A because if you have a shatter spleen with a little bit of crit, you're already getting more than enough stacks of bleed on a target. And getting a Shatter Spleen has never been easier thanks to one of the new equipments added. I think that's the last time I'll say that. I think. Next, newly hatched Zoa. Z Z Zoia? Next, newly hatched Zoia gets an A. Relative to your other boss items, this one is quite good, especially when compared to other summon related ones. The void enemies it spawns are extremely tanky, and that's the main goal when you spawn something. You want it to be as tanky as possible so that it stays alive to draw the enemy's attention off of you and onto it for as long as possible. If you have a Shatter Spleen or either of the Perforators, I recommend skipping this void entirely, but the trade-off is worth it for most other boss items. Next, Plasma Shrimp gets an S. When I first started using this item, I figured the shield uptime thing would be much more of an issue than it actually is. So long as you have a tiny bit of movement speed, you can easily keep up the 10% shields that this item grants, which even gets easier with just a couple additional sources of shield on top. Make no mistake, despite its extremely low damage per hit of 40%, the fact that that these missiles are guaranteed to proc on every hit regardless of that hit's proc coefficient, unless it's zero, makes the overall effectiveness of the shrimps extremely high even with just a single stack. Now, normal ATGs are also extremely useful, so taking a shrimp basically comes down to you want to see lots of numbers or big numbers. Shrimp will give you lots, normal ATGs will give you big. Also, the faster your attack rate, the more useful the shrimp becomes, as with those slower, less frequent hits, you'll want that occasional big damage ATG to fly out rather than always getting just a little bit of extra damage from the shrimp. Next, Pluripotent Larva gets an S. Almost all of the void items that I've talked about here have been as close to a strict upgrade as they could get to their normal counterparts, and we're not done yet. So it's no surprise that being able to get all of them simultaneously and cheating death is a pretty useful effect. In fact, I'd go as far 
far to say that if you have a good amount of non-corrupted items and find a larva, go ahead and let yourself die to then pick up those fancy purple versions right away. Chances are, you won't even need that extra life anyway once you get such a power spike. Next, Polyloot gets an S. Absolutely crazy item. Same idea with the shrimp. At first, I was thinking, eh, ukulele is the component to proc chaining, so I don't know how powerful this thing is going to be without the AoE. Uh, turns out, very powerful. Very, very powerful. If you didn't hear me about the void crit, then hear me now. If you see a polyloot, you take a polyloot. No exceptions. Your run will thank me later. Next, Safer Spaces gets an A. This one is pretty simple. If you have a good amount of bears, anything more than 10, then grab Safer Spaces. Otherwise, hold off until you see a printer. Blocking one hit guaranteed is only powerful if you're doing it on a regular basis. And at 10 stacks of void bears, you've only reduced that 15 second cooldown to just under six. Would you rather block one thing every six seconds or so, or have a 60% chance to just block everything? However, and the reason I'm giving void bears an A is that the blast shower equipment radically changes how potent these void void bears are at lower stacks as yes, it completely resets the cooldown. If you snag a blast shower with a gesture of the drowned with some fuel cells on top of that, then oh baby, the void bears are going to be feeling good. But obviously, just like finding a bear printer, that's not going to be an every run occurrence. Next, Singularity Band gets an A. You're trading the damage of regular bands for the utility of the Singularity. It still does some damage, especially due to its 1.0 proc coefficient, but for the majority of situations, you'll want the Singularity to draw enemies into its vortex and then keep them there for you to then explode. The band itself won't be doing the exploding. And the Blast Shower combo also works on the Void Band cooldown, meaning that you can have some pretty nice uptime, even reaching the point where the band then procs itself again as it does have proc coefficient. But really, you just want the for the utility. Next, the Tenta Bobble gets a B. It roots instead of slows. This is extremely powerful on Mythrix. It basically turns that into a free fight, but in all other situations, it's not much different from a regular Chrono Bobble. Basically, it's just a different colored death mark activator. Next, Void Scent Flame also gets a B. Honestly, I haven't seen too much of a difference between this and a regular Will of the Wisps. It seems like they're both equally good at getting some proc chain explosion shenanigans going. All that really differs is whether or not it's at the end of killing something or at the beginning. Void Scent Flame can come in handy when you're fighting a tanky foe as that little extra oomph of damage that you get, but again, you'll still be wiping any lesser foes regardless of which wisp version that you have. And for the final void item, Weeping Fungus gets an S. Now, the effect itself isn't actually that powerful. It's good, don't get me wrong, but there are plenty of other sources of healing and defense in general in this game. Wungus is definitely one of the better ones, I just don't place a lot of emphasis on healing or defense in the first place. That being said, the reason Wungus gets an S is because of what it comes from from the Bungus. It is infinitely better, and I do mean that literally, because unless you're playing stationary turret engineer, the only time you'd be getting a Bungus to activate at all is when you quickly AFK to scratch your butt or something. Bungus is the freest picking of all of the void items, and yes, I would even take it on the engineer. Bungus overrated. <laughs> All right, we made it to the final category here, the new equipment. Starting with the executive card, which gets an S. Here's that equipment that I've been referencing throughout the video. 10% cash back is okay. The real draw to the absolute powerhouse of an equipment that this is, is being able to take everything at a multi-shop. You get so many multi-shops during a run, and on top of that, the terminal that you get via the shipping request form also counts as a multi-shop. The amount of power this single pickup can give your run is crazy. Not to mention, you don't even need to activate it. It's a passive effect. As long as you have it in your equipment slot, you get the benefits. Absolutely fantastic equipment and one of, if not my favorite. Next, Gubo Jr. gets a C. While he is cute, he's not very practical. There is just too much competition for your equipment slot and Gubo just doesn't make the cut, sadly. At best, he really just draws some aggro off of you during the teleporter event. Yes, he can score a kill or two, but again, it's just not worth the slot. Next, the Molotov also gets a C. When you activate it, you'll throw out one singular projectile that then spreads out into six different different flame pools. The problem is those flame pools will often be everywhere but on top of the target that you aimed for. And even if they do land where you want them, it's not exactly, um, shall we say, popping off or anything. Again, too much competition for the same slot. The remote caffeinator also gets a C. Now, in my original script, I said this thing is currently bugged where you can only obtain its effect from the artifact of Enigma or the bottled chaos legendary item. Let's hope it stays that way. However, at the time of recording this script, we actually just got the patch that fixes that. Uh, but the point still stands. And finally, the the last equipment, Trophy Hunter's Tricorn gets an 
S. You instantly kill any boss enemy, doesn't even have to be the teleporter boss, and you get its boss item for free. It only has one use, but hey, that's all you need when you're hunting for that sweet, sweet, succulent shatter spleen or perforator. I recommend you pick this thing up whenever you see it, and if you're in the first loop, save it until at least stage three, as the bosses that spawn in the first two stages don't give nearly as powerful boss items as those that you see later on. Also, ahoy! And with that, we are done. Again, there's a link in the description to my spreadsheet version, which has all of the items and equipment, not just the new ones from the deal. DLC. Now, there are bound to be many differences and opinions here, so let me know your thoughts with a like or dislike on the video and a comment below. You can check out my stream at twitch.tv slash woollygaming and consider joining our Discord server as well. Thank you for watching.